What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. Today, very exciting episode, it's been requested many times, tips on how to defeat somebody faster than you. And this is something that everybody needs to know and understand because eventually you're gonna end up competing, sparring, training with somebody who just has that jumping speed on you. And even for myself, I'm a pretty darn fast guy when I start letting those hands and kicks fly, but I've still been in sessions where I go up against somebody a little bit lighter than me who just has that edge and speed. And I have to make adjustments and I have to understand what strengths I have and what is gonna allow me to defeat them. So let's dive right into this episode. So what we're going to be talking about today is not just simply me saying, how do you defeat somebody who's faster than you? Well, get faster yourself. That's not what we want. We want actual strategies for those people who just don't naturally have that pop, pop, little twitch muscle, which just fires out so quickly. And I'd say in terms of speed, sort of from one to 10, I'm kind of around an eight. I am pretty darn fast, but I'm not one of those guys who just has that raw twitch speed where they can just fire at will and people don't even see the shot coming. So I've had to learn to make adjustments and make sure I understand exactly how to beat somebody if they have that little edge in speed. And a whole lot of this episode is gonna be based around Pacquiao versus Marquez. I'm gonna use a lot of fight footage for demonstrations because this is the perfect example in the sense that Pacquiao is just such a fast opponent at his weight class. And Marquez, I would say, he's not slow, but he's definitely slower than Pacquiao. And in their fight, number four, Marquez just did such a good job of demonstrating exactly what to do if you're the slightly slower fighter. And then I will also be implementing tips for kickboxers because we have to also use the lower half of the body. So let's dive into point number one. And I want to talk initially when we enter the ring or we enter our sparring session to keep our shots straight so that when we go really wide, which is a slower punch, we don't get countered by that guy who might have the edge and speed and he can come right down the middle. Essentially, we want to avoid wide attacks until we've had a chance to feel out our opponent, engage how fast their speed is. And this is not a bad strategy. At any point in any fight or any sparring session, stay away from those big wide looping shots because if you throw it and somebody goes pop right down the middle, you might eat that shot for throwing something way too wide, way too early. Next, we need to use feints. And let me explain why this is so important. If I square off across from somebody and it's just basically, I'm gonna attack you or he's gonna attack me and it's basically who's faster, this guy's gonna win. But if I put him on edge, if I stick my shots out and I do my little twitches, even if I'm not as fast as him, it's gonna start causing some concern on his end and it will make it that much more difficult for him to utilize that raw speed and just jump in and fire off shots because he's always worried about, oh shoot, if I just jump in, I might walk right into a shot because this guy is constantly, potentially, throwing a shot, but really all I'm doing is just fainting. I'm just twitching. I'm just giving away a few little body movements that are causing hesitation. That's all you need to do. Tip number three, be the smarter fighter. And this is something that Mark has said before he fought Pacquiao. I might not be the faster fighter, but I am the smarter fighter. So if you just go straight in and you try and go punch for punch with somebody who's faster, or maybe you back out and you try to play the range game. So we're both at this distance. Well, that guy's going to win. We have to be intelligent and we have to look for mistakes because very often when people are crazy fast, they do something wrong. Maybe they fly in with their jab, but their other hand is dropping or maybe right before they throw, they drop and then they come out. There's usually some little mistake that you can take advantage of, but you can't just go in and just fight, fight, fight. You have to go in and fight, think, fight, think, and utilize that brain. Tip number four, focus as much on defense as you do offense in the gym, especially if you know you're gonna be fighting somebody who has that speed advantage on you. If you go in and you've just, okay, I did a whole lot of offense, a whole lot of banging away, and this guy's beating you to the punch, well, your go-to reaction is gonna be, okay, I have to jump in and bang with him because that's all you worked on. But if you worked on your defense, 
He worked on picking away at shots, catching shots, catching shots and throwing back, doing all sorts of training outside of just offense, head off the center line, whatever it will be, that's going to really help you become a fighter who can deal with somebody who has more speed. All of a sudden, speed is not so much of a factor if you have crazy sharp defense. And somebody like Floyd Mayweather is a great example. He is not always 100% the fastest fighter, but he is the smart fighter. He's the guy who's so hard to hit. Don't get me wrong, he is crazy fast. But not somebody like Pacquiao where you go, whoa, this guy is so crazy fast, especially when he lets his combinations fly. So making sure that you have that defense on point is going to be so very very important and quick pause guys before we move on to our next point if you guys are enjoying the video you're enjoying the tips please give the video a like if you haven't already join the channel and get subscribed and let's move on next up i want you guys to consider and try to implement body shots and low kicks as counters to these really fast offensive attacks from your speedy opponent because if somebody jumps in and they've hit you They've closed the distance. They've done half the work for you. Now from here, they might be very difficult to hit to the head. Or they might be very difficult to land shots on up high, but it's much easier if you have a good guard to block and bang down to the body or to block and fire in that low kick. And we've seen this so many times with so many fighters utilizing their counter skills, not on the head, but anything below that and it's very effective and it's very easy to start landing shots on that opponent that is just so very quick. And remember, if you start banging the body, you're gonna slow them down. If you start chopping the legs, you're gonna make their movement and their speed diminish as well. The next tip is to use timing and initiate solid counters like we saw Marquez do against Pacquiao. Instead of just standing here and trying to block and counter back at the head, block and counter back at the head, that's very difficult, especially when you have somebody who can boom, boom, fire in and out. But if you can remember as they approach, head off the center line and throw back, then you might be able to land the big shot where this faster fighter really throws his body or his weight into the shot and ends up eating something and paying the consequences for that speed almost. It's kind of flipping the script. That raw speed can actually be dangerous if you're not very defensive as you utilize it. So you're looking to exploit that speed and that quick jump in. Next up and strictly for the strikers out there who are focusing on the entire body, karate, MMA, Muay Thai, kickboxing. If we are utilizing kicks, we have to utilize that front kick. We have to use it to keep people at range because again, if we let somebody settle in to just outside punch range, it's going to be so easy for them to just snap, snap, and just hit, just hit us and hit us and hit us. So what we want to do is push them just outside that range. We don't want them here. We want them back there. And the front kick is going to do that for us. It is also a fantastic tool as they try to enter quickly. Again, make them pay. Very similar to the counter shot, which we just talked about. Head off the center line, bang them as they enter. Well, we're going to stop them as they enter and start making it very uncomfortable for them to just spring in with that crazy raw speed because they get hit in the stomach. And the final tip for today, and this is something that I would 100% utilize because I have good cardio, is we need to wait for them to fatigue. So this is why we see somebody like Marquez in the first round of their fourth fight, not jump in and try and win, but try and slow the pace down, get a feel for the speed, and then start working away, but wait for Pacquiao to slow down a little bit. Now Pacquiao is not somebody that slows down dramatically, but if his top speed is 100, maybe you wait for him to drop to like 97. The average person might look at him and go, whoa, he hasn't slowed up at all, but for somebody like Marquez, who's gonna have impeccable eyesight and who's almost just as fast, that tiny little drop might be enough. So you could go about trying to fatigue your opponent by just letting the clock tick by, or maybe you utilize those counter strikes, which we talked about every time they enter, boom, 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 and we utilize that ability to keep a good pace on them, to keep good pressure, especially if we can get to the inside where speed does not matter quite as much anymore. I mean, it's still important, but it's much scarier sparring somebody with really high level speed when you're right at punching range, like far distance punching range, as opposed to right here. Here, to me personally, speed is not as much of a factor. It's more eyesight and combination building, but out here, where it's that little twitch shot, it's a bum, bum. And if you blink for one second, you end up eating a shot. That is when the speed 
and somebody being super fresh and being able to throw 100% is so dangerous. So we want to burn them out a little bit. Could be with wrestling on the inside, could be those counter shots which I just talked about, could be chopping down the legs and trying slowing them up. It could be getting to the inside and really working that in tight boxing. There's so many ways to fatigue people, but as long as you remember not to go after them in the early stages when they're speed is at 100%, that's going to be an advantage and something that you can use in your strategy to face a faster fighter. And that's everything. There are of course other things that we can implement to try and beat somebody with speed, but these are the main points I want to utilize today. So let's call it there. If you guys enjoyed the episode, please give it a like. If you haven't already, join the channel and get subscribed. And as always guys, if you want to keep improving, keep getting better, train hard, and I'll see you back here soon for another video.